Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening po sa lahat ng nakikinig po. Hello to all our viewers from here and around the world. Napakaganda na ating talent tema ngayong hapon ito. Isang mainit na pagbati po sa inyong lahat. Well, friends, welcome to The Bridges Show. I'm very happy to be here. And I think it should be a really interesting and fun topic. But there are things you want to learn. So I, I want to take it from there and then I listen to them. Meron sila mga mitiin upang maging uh, makabuluhan pa ang pagiging katoliko. Lalong lalo na sa susunod na generasyon. Sa akin po, sa mga kabataan, ano, uh, use competence no, as a basis. In real life, hindi naman talaga tayo tumitigil sa buhay. Kailangan talaga, tuloy lang ang buhay kahit anong challenges natin. Palawan, Cebu, Baguio City, Attorney Dwight, pati La Union. So we are saying that revenge travel is real. Mas kailangan natin na i-share ang hiwaga ng sino sa mga tao. Food and health should go hand in hand. So yan ang gusto namin paratingin sa gobyerno. So if you will just devote your life to change, hindi ka yayaman sa pera, pero yayaman ka sa tao. Siyempre, ang pinakamaganda po naman sa ating universidad ay yung talagang um, natuturuan po tayo kung paano uh, maging mabuting tao. Happy Anniversary to Bridges! Here at Bridges, we build bridges of faith, bridges of hope, and bridges of love. Magandang hapon, mabuhay Pilipinas, uh, mainit na pagbati sa inyong lahat, uh, mga mahal naming manonood at taga-subaybay. Greetings to all of you, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who is watching Bridges. We're happy to welcome you back to Bridges. I'm your host for today, I'm Karen Ganpineda, a UST Bachelor of Communications uh, graduate, batch 1988. I'm a faculty member of the FEU Roosevelt Graduate School in Cainta Rizal, when I, where I teach courses in teaching in the early grades. Bridges is a University of Santo Tomas Alumni Association virtual talk show that showcases and provides notable Tomasian alumni an opportunity to share their expertise and experiences in various topics for lifelong learning. This show is the initiative of the um, USD alumni, um, USD AAI team academics under the, its informal uh, lifelong learning program. Today's episode is brought to you by the USD Alumni Association Incorporated and the USD Communications Bureau and sponsored by the USD Pax Romana Alumni Association, our very distinguished um, and generous uh, Tomasian Alumni Awardee, Engineer Emmanuel Estrada, the SVP and the Head of Regulatory Development and Strategy of Globe Telecoms. Thank you very much, sir, for sponsoring this show. Now, for the past three years, I've worked with uh, college students and children with special needs, all who struggled with the psychological effect effects of the pandemic. We have, we have all experienced, no, shared the experiences of the pandemic. And three years later, we have seen how this affected people of all ages and from all walks of life, including our children. Welcome to Bridges. The conversation is on um, spirituality and the unintended pandemic consequences, sponsored by the USD Alumni Association, and the USD Pax Romana Alumni Association Cultural Section. We're privileged to have a panel of Pax Romana alumni who are ex experts in their respective fields. Despite their busy schedules, they have generously donated their time as members of the board of directors uh, of USD Pax Romana Alumni Association. This time, I'd like to give them the floor and let them let them introduce themselves to you. Let me start with Dr. Jean. Thank you, Karen. So thank you for having me. I'm Dr. Jean Villarreal-Guno, a 
pediatrician and a pediatric gastroenterology and nutrition consultant. And I've been closely monitoring the impact of the pandemic on children's health. I graduated from the UST Faculty of Medicine and Surgery in 1982 and was Pax Romana CCC president in 1978. Dr. Jean, what's your current involvement with UST Pax Romana alumni? Oh, well, I'm a member of the Board of Trustees, so we're really in the start of phase. And of course, we're under that bigger umbrella of the UST Alumni Association. Oh, by the way, Dr. Jean is also one of the awardees in the recently held Tomashan Alumni Leaders Association or TALA. Uh, we, you did us proud, Dr. Jean. Thank you, Karen. Another special, de uh, another special guest uh, zooming in from the United States of America. Uh, Dr. Jerry Katapang. Dr. Jerry, pass on. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, good morning, Dito. Good uh, morning. Jerry, good morning, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, actually, Jan, right? Uh, Jerry Katapang, uh, Batch 87. I graduated uh, in UST uh, 1987, uh, University of Ph Pharmacy, Department of Medical Technology. Uh, I'm so privileged to be able to serve the Executive Board, Central Coordinating Council of UST Pax Romana in 85-86. And uh, in 1990, I migrated here to the United States and studied some more and uh, earned my doctorate in physical therapy, DPT. And uh, after that, I trained some more and got my certification in orthopedic manipulative physical therapy. So for the last 33 years, I'm so uh, blessed to be able to serve and help a lot of uh, injured athletes. Uh, and uh, one of the blessings of being uh, you know, a doctor seeing these patients is uh, we spend a lot of time with them. So hindi lang physically yung tulong. Uh, so because we spend a lot of time with them, so uh, we were able to help them not just physically, but morally and spiritually, emotionally as well, which I think is uh, one of our topics for today. Uh, I, I thank uh, the UST Pax Roman Alumni Association and um, uh, Jerry. Alumni Association. Uh -huh. Ayan. Uh, yes, go ahead, Karen. Go ahead, Karen. Kanina kasi hindi ka namin makita eh. Hindi namin masilayan. Ganun ba? Buti na lang, Karen. Buti na lang. Hindi mo nakita. pa ako. Anyway, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, anyway, nakikita nyo na uh, ngayon yung video. Yes, yes nakikita ka namin. Oh, yeah. no, I, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very thankful uh, for the invitation and for this privilege to uh, be one of your guests. Uh, salamat sa USD Pax Roman Alumni Association. And of course, the USD Alumni Association. Thank you so much. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Salamat po. Thank you for being here, no? both of you. Uh, I'm glad to meet again no, my fellow Tomasians and the leaders of Pax Romana here at Bridges. So indulge me for a little bit and let's go down memory lane uh, during your USD days. So Dr. Jean, you've stayed the longest in USD because of your pre-med and medicine proper schooling. So what do you find most memorable during your stay in USD? Actually, the student activity days with Pax Romana. I learned much of my life skills actually from that, from being able to interact uh, with peers who were actually had a common interest actually in uh, spirituality and religious activities. And uh, Everything, even about leadership, I learned much of the values actually from, from being part of the organization. Uh, Doc G, nakabalik ka na ng USD? Uh, yes, actually, I, I was impressed. No, hindi lang yung infrastructure improvement, pero for me, yung pati yung systems and processes, yung innovative, yung nakasabay talaga, pati dun sa di digitalization, even the enrollment process and all. So I was actually... I was actually impressed and um, I'm happy and proud na isa, isa tayo uh, consistently as one of the top universities, uh, not only in the Philippines, but actually in Asia based on uh, itong mga recent findings. Yes, makaka-proud. Uh, shout out sa mga Tomasians dyan ang mga nanonood. Um, for me, parang lahat ng memories ko ng UST are masaya. No? Parang... Um, not only my high school, my my college friends no my my classmates but uh as a paxi it was exciting nga to meet new people especially 
pag CCC kasi, we, tra- we go around the different colleges, di ba? And uh, we attend their events as well, no? So, we attended also, we had our medical missions, we have our Marian processions. I remember going from Santo Domingo to, ano, to USD, <clears throat> dala natin yung Lanaval. And then we also have the Psalms and Canticles where we have songwriting contests and I think doon ko first narinig no before pa siya naging sikat no si Jane Cruz no so Jane Cruz yung name niya Doc Jerry ano nga uh, ano ang name niya ngayon <laughs> <laughs> yung ate Pag- yung, ano, uh, yung songwriter no natin ngayon ah, so, si Jim Antiporda right Jim Antiporda yes yeah. and <laughs> anyway yun no so um sa paksumana na na develop yung aking skills in in speaking in public speaking no then i mean hmm. nung, nung high school medyo talagang medyo timid talaga ako and i also i was able to host some of the events of the different colleges like uh Miss Tomasian Pharmacy um i also hosted the intermedical school quiz b dr jean diba kahit nga ako doctor <laughs> kahit wala ako sa college ng med <laughs> so um so back then also nag uh, na experience ko yung simbang gabi sa ust so it was really very fun for me doc jerry when was the last time you visited and how was your ano how was your experience sa ust dako maganda experience ko medyo Patagal na rin ako ninapunta. We had our first alumni homecoming sa USD Pasto Mana last year. So, after 36 years, nakabisita ako sa main building sa USD, of course. Uh, alam mo, pare, nakakatawa kasi pagpasok ko ng main building, second floor ang medtech nun. Eh. So, umikot ako, no? para akong nasa yellow. Parang pinalis ako, bumata uli ako ng 36 years. And then, ang pinakagrabing experience ko, di second floor, baba ako sa stairs, no? Alam mo, yung office natin ng Institute of Religion sa Pax Romana nasa first floor, di ba? Pagpasok mo ng main view. Pagpasok mo sa so, left. Pumasok, pumasok ako oh, sa left, right? Pumasok ko sa loob. Tinanong ko, ito pa ba yung Institute of Religion office ng Pax Romana Central Council? Kasi nito ako naging active dati. Ka. Sabi ko nung college ako, naging officer ako ng Pax Romana. Sabi nung ano, wala na sir, nasa ano na po, nasa med- medicine building yata yung office ng Institute of Religion. Tapos, di, parang pili-fili ko, batang-bata pa rin ako dahil 36 years ako ginakapunta, di ba? Pagkatapos sabi sa akin nung secretary, sir, uh, kailan doon pala kayo naging officer ng Pax naman? Sabi ko, 85, 86, alam mo sabi sa akin, sir, naku po, hindi pa po ako pinapanganak niya. Naku, nagsak trip, nabagsak yung tama ako kasi akala ko, bata ako. Sir, Bigla ka na pinap- nagising sa katotohanan. Bigla ako nagising. Pero it's okay. It's a, it's a great experience and I'm proud to be back sa USD last year. I'm so proud of our university. Parating ko sinasabi sa mga pasyente ko. This was established in 1611, 400 plus years old, first uh, university in, in Asia. So I'm proud to be a Tomasan and I'm proud to be a graduate of USD. The only royal pontifical <laughs> diba? university. <laughs> ano, ilang ilang pope yung naging ano natin, yung nagbasbas sa UST. No? Talagang uh, very prestigious ang ano, UST. So, um, so everyone, our topic today is spirituality and the unintended pandemic consequences. Uh, Dr. Jean, as a pediatrician, you deal with uh, children every day. So have you noticed the the consequences of the pandemic among the children that come to you? Yes, Karen. So the pandemic has really disrupted every aspect of our lives. And children and families have been hit hard. They've faced a range of unintended consequences, including physical health. So many medical conditions were unattended to during that time immunizations actually were delayed, and including mental health. Many children and adolescents experienced anxiety and depression, and it disrupted also our educational systems as well as socialization, since children learn through their senses and learn actually through interactions with others. So it's important to recognize and address these issues that have been posed by the pandemic. Yeah, I know it's very important to address the in- unintended consequences. No, the pandemic has caused a lot of stress and anxiety, um, and uncertainty. No, the, during the uh, 
during those times and these factors have significant impact on a lot of uh, people's psychological well-being the the pandemic related stressors uh, uh, such as yung social isolation yung uh, financial worries no and the fear of the virus talagang uh, it brought the, uh, increased the levels of anxiety and depression um this was crucial that we acknowledge and you know address the issues talaga to prevent long term psychological damage uh doc jerry so in your experience in your work no um what coping mechanisms have you uh you know did did the people encountered you know what they resorted to during the pandemic ah uh, karen napaka importante ng spirituality sa atin no? kasi uh, sabi nga nila no para makapope ka sa sa challenge sa crisis uh, yung sense of spirituality is so important and spirituality is defined as uh something like a connection to someone who's more powerful and greater than us uh as you know as catholics christians you know uh being prayerful and being spiritual not very important coping mechanism yan, so we can uh overcome the challenges uh of you know this kind of pandemic and any crisis that we have in life so not very important and I, I'm, i'm so happy na, as filipinos we have that kind of spirituality and i think it helped us overcome this pandemic and other challenges that we have in our lives yes yes um taka medyo na ano ako dito sa mga to medyo shout out ko lang yung those who are uh joining us on facebook no uh, hello to everyone uh USTAAI um yung Pax Romana si uh, hello Malu and Ferdy hello to you and Um, of course, our sponsor, no, the um, engineer Manny Estrada, um, Ma'am Evelyn Songko, hello, and to everyone uh, who's watching us right now. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, so uh, going back to you, Dr. Jean, uh, during the pandemic, children of all ages, no, stayed at home. Uh, some continued through virtual learning, while others were. homeschooled by their parents no but we can see that there is a uh, disruption in their learning so can disruptions in early childhood education cause a delay in uh, the child's growth and development yes Karen particularly in the Philippines wherein we had the longest lockdown in the whole world oh my so it really disrupted education systems with many children even having limited access to early childhood education. Young children born during the pandemic, based on studies, had lower scores not only in their motor development, but more so in their language and personal social skills compared to infants born before the pandemic. So these COVID-era babies, as they are termed, are talking less, signaling future reading challenges. And we know that reading is a basic skill that will actually predict good school performance, and good school performance will actually predict productivity later in life. So these overburdened parents during the pandemic weren't able to engage their babies and toddlers in the kind of conversation that is actually crucial for language development and eventually for reading. The pandemic also had a profound effect you know, on children's psychosocial well-being, and they en- experienced increased screen time and isolation, which has hindered their ability to form relationships and interact with peers. So there is really need to reduce screen time and offer more sensory experiences for children since children learn through play and learn through their senses, what they see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. That's why now there are recommendations that From the age zero to two, as much as possible, zero screen time. So all just really interactions with an adult. And then beyond the age of two, the recommendation is to limit uh, recreational screen time to only about uh, 30 minutes a day. And then in the older child, maximum na yung two hours per day. The data shows that Filipinos actually are spending 
four hours per day on recreational screen time. So it's really eating up the time for interactive play, eating up the time on sleep as well as on physical activity. So children really learn best when parents are taking turns or responding to them or reading them books or, or actually playing with them. So this will put them at a path towards learning and succeeding in school and later in life. Yes, yes. Uh, very, um, medyo nakaka-relate ako, Doc G, no, no? Kasi na during the pandemic, I I talked to a lot of the teachers na, you know, my former students who are teachers then, and um, teachers now, no? So a lot of them were really having difficulty. Um, I did, no? I, I experienced this, you no? Know, especially during the big yung lockdown, no? big la we had to switch to online, no? From you know, going face to face and you know, uh, meeting the children, meeting the students, bigla shift to face to to online learning. So those who don't have gadgets, especially the students, no, talaga the teachers, wala silang choice. No, they have to go through you know, um, cross rivers, no, umakit ng bundok. Talagang para madala lang yung mga modules na yan and uh alam ko some of the students especially those um children with special needs na stop talaga yung kanilang ano uh, learning talagang walang magtuturo sa kanila no so um i hope they're okay talaga o oh, um doc jing nabanggit mo yung ano yung study can you give us a little more about this okay so there was this study of the philippine psychological association so among filipinos at saka it was conducted actually during the pandemic 2020 so half of the filipinos experienced anxiety and depression half did not now, which tells us that more or less half of the filipinos have resilience or katatagan half don't have and it's interesting to note that resilience is actually developed in that first 3 years of life if the attachment of the parents was good and if the parents expose them to some form of risk. But for generally, no, kasi, uh, generally no, Filipino mothers are indulgent in their parenting style. So, hindi siya nakatulong actually for resilience or katatagan. And for those okay, who experience anxiety and depression, what really helped were non-specialized, non non-focused mental health services such as counseling, support groups of positive persons, crisis hotlines. So, kukunti lang naman talaga yung nasa severe and very severe range that would really need the professional help of a psychiatrist or a psychologist. So, what they meant, no, na nakatulong actually for resilience and well-being of Filipinos was yung spirituality was a, a big factor. And then, mindfulness and acceptance. So, in other words, just really... Uh, Focusing on the moment and uh, without any judgment and uh, just stopping and, and, and pausing. So isa yun sa, sa nakatulong. Ang hindi nakatulong was actually two or more friends na ranting against each other about all, all the negatives. You know, the kind of conversations like, ano ba yan? Yes. Hindi pa tapos ang pandemic, nagkagera naman ng Ukraine. Tapos hmm. nagka, nagka recession. Tapos ano ba yan? Baka maging province na lang tayo ng China. Yung, yung ganong conversation, it doesn't help. And we said yung, what didn't help also is yung uh, hours and hours of trying to distract ourselves. For example, watching Netflix uh, the whole night, not sleeping. So it did not contribute at all to overall well-being and, and resilience. So sayang yung oras and it ate up on sleep as well as on physical activity. Yes, yes. <laughs> nakaka, medyo nakaka-relate talaga ako dyan. <laughs> yung walang tulog, you know. Kasi during yung the onslaught mm -hmm. of the pandemic talaga when we had to shift to online, wala kang, wala kang choice kung hindi cellphone yung gamitin mo. Especially if you don't have the laptop, no? medyo at least bigger yung screen. But with the cellphone, talagang nakatuto ka lang dyan. No? The students were communicating to you not only about their academics, but also about the problems no in in their lives so parang uh ma may problema po ako kasi parang may may sakit daw siya so 
ako nasan yung parents mo? Ganun. Parang hindi sila sanay mag-communicate with their parents. So parang, tataka muna, hindi ako yung nanay mo. Alam dapat ng nanay mo yan. Yung mga ganyan. And then, there was also one incident when uh, nasa ano, parang sabi, Ma'am, sorry po, hindi ako makakasubmit ng ano ko, ng, ng project ko. Tapos bigla siya nag-share ng screen. Nandun siya sa ano, nag-share siya ng picture. Nandun siya sa bubong ng bahay nila kasi baha. Tapos during may bagyo nung time na yon ano dito sa ano um dito sa Metro Manila talagang ano siya uh, so nakakaawa na talagang uh, hindi lang yung students yung affected but also yung mga teachers yung adults no and then you see also on social media diba yung parang mayat maya na lang bigla na lang may makikita ka na nag may kandila na or may black yung ano yung profile picture so para alam mo na merong namamatay sa mga friends mo, sa mga um, mga kakilala mo or yung mga parents ng mga students mo. No? So parang so much they had to endure kaya talagang hindi mo, ma, ano eh, hindi mo mapigilan talaga yung na magkaroon sila ng depression and ano, no? especially kung wala nang mag-guide ng mga adults sa kanila. No? Um, Doc Jerry, so uh, Can you tell us the importance of spirituality as a coping mechanism? Mm. Sinabanggit uh, na, yun sa study ni Doc Jean eh. Right, right. Napakaganda ng, ng sinabi ni Doc Jean ano, about spirituality. So, yung mga researches na sinabi niya, that's powerful information. Uh, with regards sa coping mechanism ng spirituality, uh, uh, I, can, I can relate to that in a big way. Uh, kasi I was the fourth patient sa county namin dito sa Missouri na nagkaroon ng COVID, March 2020. No? So, uh-huh. talking about spirituality, we can achieve that in, I think, a couple of ways. Number one would be self-actualization. And then number two is being part of a community. And I would like to give a, a concrete example on that kasi na-experience ko siya. No? Uh, mahirap talaga nagpasan kasi for three years we were caged, right? And we're human beings, we're not animals. And and for three years, napakahirap yan. Uh, you know, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. No? Pero yung dalawang factors na yun, uh, talking about resilience, na banggit ni Dr. Jean, no? uh, nakatulong to sa pagiging resilient, meaning we're able to rebound. And, and to me, there were two ways that we're able to uh, cope up with that. First, yung self-actualization. Dahil una nga ako sa uh, mga nagkaroon, no? fourth, fourth patient actually. Sabi ng Dr. Ko, Jerry, you're the, the third doctor and the fourth patient. Uh, wag kang pupunta rito pag, uh, pag hindi ka makalaka ng 25 feet dahil pinalagay kita sa ventilator. Pag nilagay kita sa ventilator, 90% you're gonna die. 10% you're gonna survive. Yun ang pumapasok sa ulo kasi I was in quarantine for 17 days actually. Kasi bumalik yung symptoms ko noong 13 day. No? So, napagirap. No? And then, noon na doon ako sa quarantine, ako lang mag-isa sa place ko doon sa, sa clinic sa Farmington, Missouri. Ako lang mag-isa for 17 days. During that time, March 2020, 12 to 13 of my friends, five sa America, siyam sa Pilipinas, they died only in 17 days. So, talking about self-actualization. Kasi, halang ko, hindi ko na, hindi na ako tatagal kasi hindi talaga ako makahinga yung third, fourth day ng uh, diagnose ako, no? So sabi ko, bakit nabuhay ako sila? Hindi nila nalagpasan. No? So na-realize ko, ano, tapos na yung mission nila. Uh, they have already accomplished uh, their God's uh, assigned mission. Kaya they're ready to see the Creator. Uh, pero tayo, <laughs> nandito ka pa, nandito pa tayo lahat. Kasi meron pa tayong mission, hindi pa tapos. So we just have to search it every day. So, Every day, nasa Google ako, sinesearch ko. Ano ba itong mission ko? <laughs> so, so, that's self-actualization. That's one way of coping up in uh, you know, situations like this and being resilient. Second is, na-experience ko rin. No? Uh, sabi nga nila, napakahirap nung dinanas natin. Pero one of the things that, that happens sa past naman is we're able to form you know, our, our alumni association after trying it for 50 years, right? And and one way of being resilient and overcoming challenges like so is being part of a community. And and I remember during that time, na nakakwaran din tayo. We had you know we had rosary three four times a week. You know live. We have masses. We have we have gatherings at mass or mana. So that sense of belonging, uh, being part of a community, all striving to overcome the challenges, is another way to cope up with this 
type of challenges. So, you know, uh, that, that's the lesson that we learned from this pandemic. So, and, and you know what, in actuality, life is all about uh, becoming and overcoming and more of overcoming. So uh, we just have to overcome every day, whatever challenge we face. So spirituality is so important. How can you promote this no, to, to individuals and to, or to groups of friends, ganyan, yung spirituality? Ah, uh, medyo mahirap yun. No? Kasi, ano, sabi nga nila, we have, we could not impose that. Kasi it's your personal, you know, it's your personal uh, belief, right? Mm-hmm. So, ma-share mo lang sa mga friends mo and, and, and your co-workers, your patients, by being positive. You know, they will see that if you're, mm-hmm. if you're strong, if you're faithful, if you're spiritual. Kung nasa yun, yun they, they will just see it in you. And I think that's the best way we can do that. That's the best way we can share it. Yeah. Um I guess during the pandemic talagang medyo mag-iisip ka talaga eh no lalo na kung hindi ka naman hindi ka pala simba, hindi ka masyadong nagro-rosary, hindi pa naman yung ginagawa before, hindi mo naman ginagawa na you sh- you know yung yung talaga mag-pray, di ba? But then during the pandemic talagang we were tested and we were we had to hang on to something and you know thank god for faith talaga na we hang on to that no so ako during the pandemic we had this you know may, di ba may marami ka namang mga chat groups di ba may mga classmates mo nung college classmates mo nung high school ganyan no so parang uh during the pandemic we were we bonded together and nagkaroon nga kami ng ng ano ng ng Saturday group, Saturday group, parang that's entertaining. <laughs> May Saturday rosary group kami, no? Aside from, you know, the UST Pax Romana and the uh, shout out to the, the ano, ano, the, those who, who held the rosary talaga almost every day, na, uh, every day nandun sila, no? Um, if you needed to, and, and the, the masses online, talagang, ano, nakatulong siya, no? In, in, ano, so yung mga classmates ko noon sa, Taga UST din, no? Taga uh, Faculty of Arts and Letters din, ano? So, uh, yung mga shout out sa inyo, 183 low. Um, yun, sa kanila talaga humugot ako ng lakas, no? Yung, not only yung with work, but also, you have your own problems, eh. You have your own family to think about, di ba? So, Ayun, malaking malaking tulong talaga yung ano yung commu- sense of community and the spirituality within the community talagang maganda yung meron kayong shared you know um hindi lang magkaklase kayo or hindi lang faith is a very um you know spirituality is a very uh good shared ano no bonding experience you know, for for people palang not only a meeting of minds and hearts but you know the souls are you know we we are on the same level no wavelength ganyan um dr jean can you discuss how spirituality uh, can help children and families cope with the pandemic's unintended consequences Yes, Karen. So uh, here are some ways no, by which spirituality or our faith can be helpful. More so validated siya ng study no, ng Philippine Psychological Association nga na yun ang isa sa nakatulong talaga sa mga Filipinos to, for their overall well-being and resilience or katatagan. So I can think of three ways. No? First is it provides a sense of hope and meaning. So it helps children and families find comfort in the belief that there is a God who cares for them and who has a plan for their lives. That everything that is happening actually is parang part of our all mission, our overall mission and that everything has a role. Now, we will come full circle and realize what all these experiences actually meant in our lives and how it helped us to become better persons after the experience. So many of these... Uh, Faith practices such as prayer, meditation, mindfulness, attending masses, or other religious activities can help children and families also manage their stress and anxiety. Because these practices 
promote a feel that feeling of calm and well-being which can be very important actually during a crisis since it generally you know, in a religious activity the tone you know, the is set there's a culture of uh, actually being calm and quiet and being at peace the second way i could think of is uh, many spiritual practices encourage acts of kindness and service to others since it, there was this movement actually that initially it was the ayuda with ayuda the person being helped knows from where it actually came from knows the donor and then it became the community pantries and the difference with community pantries was you never knew who the donor was diba you just all contribute to a common common pot or area and then anybody can just get what you need just get what you need so parang that became deeper because it doesn't matter anymore uh, who gave so it's a movement that we could see that actually in a way was part of a uh, expression of faith and as we said it, not only the catholic religion but all religions practically would encourage this acts of kindness and that that service to others so helping others can give children and families a sense of purpose a sense of mission and can help them feel more connected to their families their communities third would be spiritual practices can offer a sense of structure and routine so for example the family has a fixed routine of uh, saying prayers or the rosary at particular time this gives a sense of uh, being in control of our lives even when the circumstances are unpredictable and out of control uh, many of the psychiatrists and psychologists would emphasize that to reduce stress a fixed schedule helps or a fixed routine helps no such as sleeping and waking up at the same time the time for meals is fixed the time for prayer the time for physical activity so in a way this um, this religious practices offers that sense of structure and routine in our lives so in this manner we can say that faith this is how the mechanisms of action by which faith and spirituality help uh filipinos in building their overall well-being and resilience or katatagan thank you uh, dr jean um i just want to see uh, read to you some of the comments uh, on facebook no um so hello miss olga hi daw doc jean and the no doc jerry um hi, sabi olga. Ni, yeah sabi ni Ferdy, um uh our president Ferdinand martinez so, uh, uh, children were deprived to share their ideas to others because they were more into the gadgets during those times and also the pandemic also taught us to go back to basics uh thank the lord for all the blessings despite all the challenges in life um mr Resita mir uh also mentioned the uh, strong spiritual uh spirituality uh strengthen our faith to hang on and accept the challenges. So, um, Doc Jerry, uh, what can you add to the ano? No, can you can you discuss the importance of community support, uh, faith, prayer, and how this ties to the healing of uh, pain and in um, injuries? Uh, that's a great question, Karen. Uh, nabanggit nga ni Doc Chin kanina, no, yung importansya ng resilience. Paano tayo makakatawid? Paano tayo makakaribang? Um, the community support is so important kasi sabi nga nila, no man is an island. Hindi natin kaya, kaya mag-isa as much as possible. So like what I mentioned earlier, a combination of self-actualization, uh, knowing oneself, more and better is important but also in support ng community is so important uh based on experience um uh community support may tatlong class yan eh. pwede magkaroon ng physical support uh in community pwede magkaroon ng emotional and spiritual ngayon medyo ingat tayo sa spiritual in physical medyo you know it's easy to explain yung mga may injury may pain you know uh hindi sila masyadong independent kailangan nila ng tulong uh, kung pupunta sila sa ospital, kung pupunta sila sa clinic. 
uh, hindi sila mobile. So that's a good physical support, you know. Uh, Napaka-importante ng emotional at spiritual. Pero unfortunately, hindi, na, in, ano eh, hindi natin pwedeng i-discuss yung spiritual as much as possible. You know, sabi nga nila, dalawang hindi pwedeng pag-usapan. Politika, tsaka religion, di ba? Pero like what we mentioned earlier, natanong mo siya, paano ba nila mararamdaman yan? Ngayon, kung talagang meron kang genuine sincerity and love to others, lalabas na lang yan eh. Makikita ka ng tao, makikita ka ng pasyente na you really care, you really love them, right? And ang pinaka-importante na magbibigay natin if we're part of the community and ang support ang magbibigay natin is the emotional support. Kasi one, once merong pain ng isang tao, merong injury, you know, they're down, they're depressed, right? And napaka-importante na banggit ni Dr. Jim kanina yan, no, na we have to return to our sense of purpose. Yan ang, kung, kung meron tayo maibibigay sa ibang tao, uh, yan ang pinaka-importante sa tingin ko na maibalik natin yung sense of purpose nila. Kasi, uh, someone smarter than me said, Jerry, you know, the happiness and joy can only be achieved when we are in the process of achieving a godly, worthwhile goal. Saan pa na makikita yung happiness and joy mo? So, uh, ibang tao, inahanap nila yung happiness sa drugs, sa alcohol, kung sa gambling, kung ano. Pero ang problema pala, nakalimutan nila mag-create ng goals. Eh. Sabi nga nila, you should, not, you should not stop creating goals. Right? Uh, the only moment that we will stop creating goals is the moment we die. We should be contented but never satisfied. Sabi nga nila. No? Kasi, yung process na achieving goal, doon natin makikita yung totoong joy and happiness. We all graduated from USD. Masaya tayo nung gumraduate tayo. O, oh, natapos na ako, graduate na ako ng USD. Pero anong pinakamasayang panahon natin? Di ba nung lumulusong tayo sa baha? <laughs> Kung hindi tayo natutunog? Kahit hirap tayo sa pakasamahan na sa activities, nag-aaral tayo. Kasi we are in the process of achieving that goal. And that's the true essence of happiness and joy. That's the only way we can achieve that. So the best thing we can do is to help others, especially those in pain and with injuries, uh, for them to go back and make, make them realize their sense of purpose. And I think that's the best way to be resilient and to overcome not, not just health challenges, but all challenges we face in life. Good point, uh, Dr. G, about being resilient and uh, you know, overcoming challenges. I think that's, that's the best uh, thing that I can share. And, you know, the best thing I've, I've realized and observed uh, throughout these years. Well, my share ko lang sa inyo, no? So I found my my faith and spirituality were sources of comfort and stre- uh, strength and guidance during the difficult times, especially for me who mentors older kids, no, young adults, and uh, working with families of children with special needs, talagang uh, it wasn't. It, you have to be full in all in order to ano eh, to give back something, to give something to to other people. So, kailangan puno ka eh, no? As your 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 cup runneth full. So, kailangan pa, bago ka makapag-share sa iba talagang asikasuhin mo rin yung sarili mo, de ba? Yeah. So, uh, faith provided a sense of purpose and meaning for me. Uh, it reminded me why I chose to teach in the first place. No? It provided me the motivation to keep going uh, even when things were really, really tough. No? Um, also, it provided the sense of community. Nga. Um, being part of a faith community provided a sense of connection and support. No? So, um, especially when you needed uh, individuals who especially for people who who need um you know support yung hindi lang we are supporting others diba so tayo din kailangan din natin talaga ng support so um we have to we had to find those people no um and good thing yun nga no without the yung yung rosary club namin ano yung former students of uh UST AB1 A3 no uh probably I would have lost it no because I was parang I felt I was curry um 
carrying with me not only yung burdens ko no yung yung aking um yung weaknesses no but also the weaknesses of other people no and then yung weaknesses ng students mo I mean weaknesses pa ng family mo no yung mga dinaramdam ng mga anak mo di ba so parang nagpatong-patong yun so parang may, may time sabi ko parang feeling ko this is the first time I felt na I'm not a good teacher parang ganoon no so parang yung yun nga parang mako-question mo na yung sarili mo no but you know good thing faith was there no talagang um it held you no um yun na nga binanggit mo doc Jerry no it promotes resilience and for able for you to be able to bounce back from the adversity ang hirap mag-bounce back no especially if you especially if you have families who are suffering de ba yung minamatayan yung ganun so parang uh, hirap talaga sila no so parang uh, talagang through prayer makakaano sila eh makaka makakabalik no makakaahon ganyan and also um I think Catholic faith emphasizes the importance of compassion and empathy for others. Sabi nga natin, eh, be kind, no? Because you don't know what the other person is going through, what others are going through. So, um, this can be especially important for individuals who work with children with special needs. Before the pandemic, talagang kailangan mo na all the patients in the world, no? If you have uh, family members who are, you know, you have they have special those we have special needs no um kasi they need extra no extra patience extra understanding and support no so um kailangan yun talaga uh magkaroon ka talaga ng ano ng ng empathy for others and also um yung catholic faith natin ano uh, reminded me that there is a god yun yun period <laughs> There's always a reason to keep going and that eventually things will you know, get better. You know? So overall, yung faith and spirituality were powerful resources for me to deal with young children and young people. You know? And helping them in find meaning, uh, help them with community, help them to find resilience, uh, compassion, and hope for the challenging times talagang medyo medyo mahirap yung ano yung yung ginawa na yan ano so um thank you very much for your ano ano uh yung input ng ating mga ano ng ng ating experts uh meron ko lang pa, parang meron lang gusto mong magsa, magbati sa inyo dito sa Facebook <laughs> uh si Arlene uh, Miss Miss Talawe Arlene Talawe uh, Mary Jane Mateo Tesoro hello to you Hi MJ MJ hello <laughs> daw and um Malu said uh the pandemic taught us or spirituality taught us to renew ties with our families uh we became closer and more sensitive to the needs of those around us Yon. Thank you very much. Hello po, Miss Edita Ocampo. Hello po sa inyo. Um, meron tayong konting pakulo dito. May fast talk portion tayo. <laughs> Doc Jerry, ibang fast talk to ha? <laughs> <laughs> Ninenervous ako ka. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi kita tatanungin sa mga ano mo. Kung ano-ano mo dyan. <laughs> okay. So, so may I ask you, uh, Um, si Dr. Jin muna ako. Oh. Si Dr. Jin muna, di ba? <laughs> Minenervous ka ka agad. Eh. Teka lang. Ano? So I'll give a word and then uh, give me one word to describe no, what as best as you can. Okay. One word about this ano, this word that I will give you. Okay? Ready? <laughs> Ready. So both of you will answer. Okay, so okay. Um, Ladies number first. one. Huh? Ladies first. Okay. Number one. <laughs> so, Doc Jean muna. Sige. Mental health. Well-being. Okay. Doc Jerry, ikaw. Being tough. Being tough. Yes. Um, ako yung mental health is well. <laughs> Di ba parang 
wala wala nang mangyayari sa iyo. And then um what about church? Community. Jo Jerry. God. God. Yes. Uh vaccine. Boosters. Save me. <laughs> Yes. Ako na sa isip ko Pfizer. <laughs> Ang dami kasi di ba? And then um what about social life? Virtual? Balance. Ako online. <laughs> social life online lang talaga. And then um what about family life? Refuge. Still balance. Daya ka. Hindi ko yan hihingian ng ano, ng reason. But yes, yes. At totoo naman yun. We need the we need to balance things out talaga para you know maka ano tayo, maka get through tayo dito sa ano na to. Get through with the pandemic, no? Um. So ang haba ng ano natin, ang bilis ng oras natin. Um. Uh, yeah, I would like to ask you, ano, uh, Doc Jean, um, can you give us uh, some words, no? your final words? Okay, since the study showed that um, faith and spirituality really help with resilience and overall well-being of Filipinos, then we invite you all to strengthen that relationship with God really invest time actually in spirituality, in prayer, in, in religious practices. Back to you. Okay. Um, so um, for me, um, so hello to everyone who's watching out there. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong support as amen. And um, hello to the families, uh, to the students I had no sa sa mga kakilala namin lahat uh thank you very much for um sharing this time with us um and thank you for the experiences that you brought with us um sometimes you always question kasi no uh as siguro it's part of human nature we question what's happening to us why me bakit ako bakit yung pamilya namin parang ganyan no so we we question god no It can be cliche to others, no. But for me, it was really prayer, no. I think prayer was key. Prayer is key. Um, prayer strengthened my belief that there is a God who is in control of my life, no. Kahit na parang ang bulugun talaga, parang ayon. Ah, I learned to just lift up everything to Him and. To let go of the problems and the worries and just let God handle it. No, but allow God, uh, to be Him, no, to guide us and to trust in the process, and also to not be afraid. No, uh, do not be crowd clouded by fear. Um, Frank Herbert said that fear is a mind killer. Um. It ano eh? It it stops you from doing anything else. It stops you from thinking of you know good things to do. What what um how you can solve problems? Then yun so talaga. Pag naunahan ka ng takot, wala na. Hindi ka na makakakilos. Yun na. Pag naunahan ka na ng takot, dadami nang dadami yon. Kahit na parang lalo mo hinuho ka yung sarili mo dun sa madilim na ano na yan ano. Ah, so parang um. You do not be distracted also by what others are telling you, lalo na the negativity around you. Stop that, no. Ah, if people are negative, wala. Delete mo na yan. Unfollow mo na yan. Iblock mo na yan. Especially people this is on social media. Talaga, block them. Unfollow pa sa negative. Wala. Alisin mo na yan sa buhay mo. Kasi talaga ng mahirapan ka lalo na maka bounce back nga, no. And Uh, let God be God. Siya yan eh. Siya yan. Alam niya yan. Alam na. So, talagang hayaan natin siya. And then, the rest, after that, if once na you give up, na give up mo na sa kanya, allow him to, ano, 
um, rest, no? be calm, and trust in God. No? He said, this too shall pass. No, talagang hinahawakan ko yun, matatapos yun. <laughs> Saan ba papupunta yun? Matatapos mo, papagod din yung problema na yun, maubos din yan. So, talagang ano, um, you just have to trust na yun yun, matatapos din yan. And whatever it is that you prayed for, whatever your wishes are, your desires are, parang ako sinasad ko, claim na. <laughs> parang hindi pa dumarating. Claim na yan. Okay, this will happen. Yun. Parang, um, kasi naniniwala ko no, na it will happen because we're, we're God's children. Di ba? So parang, bibigyan niya yun sa atin eh. Of course, syempre, parang magulang yun, mag-iipon muna. Mag- <laughs> in the proper time, may mga ganyan. No? So parang, hindi mo naman makukuha din agad. Agad-agad, no? Um, let me just share with you some of the lines from... Uh, Favorite poem of mine, um, Desiderata by Max Ehrman. So some of uh, this line goes, You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it's clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God whatever you conceive him to be and whatever your labors and aspirations in this noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. So be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Doc Jerry. Oh, um, yeah, you know, we just have to be careful on what we say and what we do. We have to stay positive. The only thing magiging negative tayo pag nag-iintay ka ng COVID results. <laughs> no, seriously, we don't know kung ano yung iniisip, kung ano yung nasa puso, nasa loob ng isang tao. So we have to be very careful on what we say. We got to stay positive all the time. Uh, second, you know, sabi nga nila, if you're down, bring others up. If you're unhappy, make other people happy. And lastly, in Pasumana, we believe that we're here to love and serve others. So just keep loving, keep serving. Have peace. Pax Christi and Reino Christi, peace of Christ in the kingdom of Christ. Thank you very much for that. That's a very good reminder to all of us. Uh, yun nga, agree sa'yo si ano. <laughs> um, ano tawag ito? Teka, balikan ko lang itong mga reviewers natin sa Facebook. Um, Sabi ni Ma'am Edith, uh, thanks so for your discussions are very inspiring and reflective of our Tomasian values and uh, virtues. Si Ma'am Teresa Quaresma, si Ma'am Tess, being molded the Tomasian way and imbibed the Pax teachings, loving, serving without counting the cost, it was our guide in becoming the living testimony of God's uh, God's hope, especially during the pandemic. So thank you, Doc G and Doc Jerry. Ayon. Um, My pleasure. Salamat sa opportunity. Salamat po. Um, keep fighting, sabi ni Ms. Teresa, uh, Teresita Mir. Uh, keep fighting. We can overcome this pandemic. The word, the words to live up with our spirituality, resilience. Be informed and keep keep the faith. Um, uh, Mom Mary Jane, uh, si MJ, si Mom MJ, Tesoro said to love and to serve. That's what we are for. Um, ayun na to live without counting the cost. Kakanta na ako nyan. Go on sharing. Go on serving. Spreading God's love and word. Hey brothers, hey sisters. Today we are all one in Christ. Yes, we are. So very true, Ma'am Karen, don't let fear ruin our belief in God. Strengthen our faith and to share the three C's. According to Ma'am Edith Ocampo, so three C's daw, compassion, competence, and being committed as our Tomasian values learned and shared. Yan. Yan. Um, so... Thank you very much, uh, Doc Jean and uh, Doc Jerry. So in behalf 
On behalf of the UST Alumni Association Incorporated, we would like to thank uh, each and every one of you who, who shared this afternoon with us. Um, thank you very much, uh, of course, Dr. Jean, Dr. Jean Villarreal Guno, um, Dr. Jerry Katapang, uh, all of the board, um, the board members, no, and the members and the board members or the officers of the UST Pax Romana Alumni Association. Thank you for being part of our show. And um, at the same time, we would like to thank UST Pax Romana Alumni Association, led by its president, Mr. Ferdinand Martinez, and our gracious, gracious thanks to to uh, Engineer Emmanuel Estrada for sponsoring our episode today. As always, sir, thank you very much for being there for us. Um, some announcements. Uh, the much-awaited 2023 Academ Alumni Industry and Government AAIG International Multisectoral Summit is coming this September 29 to 30 with the theme AAIG Nexus, Next Visions, um, new visions, new frontiers, new strategies, and practices. Please start marking their calendar, no, September 29 to 30. The program and registration details are going to be published on the UST AAI web, uh, Facebook page uh, in the coming weeks. So again, friends, uh, before we end the show, please don't forget to like, and, um, like share uh, our show and subscribe to the UST Tomashan Alumni Community YouTube channel and Facebook page. Join na rin kayo sa Pax Roman Alumni Association. Uh, members dyan, sumali kayo. Uh, here at Bridges, we build bridges of people, bridges of knowledge, and new learnings. So this is Professor Car Karen Pineda, your host for today. Thank you very much for spending time with us. Um, do watch again Bridges next week for another exciting episode entitled Bridges Visits UST Legaspi. Sali kami dyan. Uh, remember here at Bridges, we build bridges of faith, bridges of hope, and bridges of love. Enjoy the rest of the evening. God bless all of you and mabuhay. Maraming maraming salamat.